Okay guys, I have no idea if you can see it or not, but the Jackson Brown Memorial Boat Shop is up and running. I'll give you just a quick tour around here, okay? Um, this is a figure out what to do with it um, pile here. Uh, this over here, there'll be a row of 3D printers here once they go from the guest room out here, which my wife will be very pleased. Oh, this is a cool new addition here. Uh, stay tuned for this one. Yes, it is a Glowforge Pro. If you know, you know what's coming with that. Uh, this is a very sad Triumph right here. I haven't driven it, driven it at all this year. There it sits. Uh, trust me, it's really beautiful when it's all cleaned up, and I'd love to drive it, uh, ride it, that is. Uh, but, man, I don't have the time because I've been working on this and many, many other things. So you can kind of see the basic layout of stuff here. I think uh, here's a very bent up bike that I didn't have fastened properly on the carrier on the back of the trailer on our last trip and it took a tumble down the freeway so I have a bunch of parts here in a box. Uh, three lathes, it's going to turn into one. Uh, those two will be combined into one very functional lathe I hope and so this will consolidate quite a bit over here, not as much as I would like. I wish this AC was on. I honestly, I couldn't figure out the uh, thermostat, so I'm gonna figure that out later. Um, and it's just, I, and it, boy, I apologize if you can't see anything. I'm just trying to guess where you're looking. Uh, but that's kind of it. This is a, a sweet uh, build table here. It's on really good casters, and so it rolls around really nice and locks into place. Uh, picked up another box so I could stack more stuff. The gasser is here. Let's change the subject again, just so you can see what's happening here just briefly. Yes, it's been all assembled. It's really ready to go, short of some bodywork and paint. And um, this is funny here. I was trying to figure out how I was gonna make one big cowling so I could put the, this have, will have two exposed motors, 3D printed um, Fords, actually. Big 427 Fords will sit on here, not 427s. 428s, I think. Anyway, um, whatever it had originally, I've got the uh, the print files for it, and there'll be two motors here. And uh, David Brandt said, well, why don't you just make it out of one big piece of Lexan and just tape it on? You know, not Lexan, uh, G10, right? And uh, just tape it on, and I thought, well, duh. So that's how that's gonna go on, interior here. To, oh, a really dusty quick draws in there. We do have the cowling made. Mm, magnets like always, right? Uh, very nice and lightweight. K and J Magnetic said you can glue these things in place and they'll stay. They promised. Um, so I glued them instead of normally I, I put mounts and put screws and all that stuff. They're glued. I screwed them in down here just because I don't I don't trust them completely, guys. I can always tape this on, right, if I have to. And uh, oh, I made a little 3D printed doohickey there that on the front. Pow! It's on there. And so this will tape on. I just got to finish it, man. But I've been doing this. I've been doing this. Um, so not done. Definitely a work in progress. Working on it. Anyway, he asked very specific questions. Today, we're going to set up. Pardon me. The strut. We're going to determine sponson and ride height first, okay? And he, he was sending me pictures of different ways he was trying to measure it. I went back in my own videos, tried to find where I talked about it, because I have several times, but I couldn't find it. So we're gonna talk about ride height, strut location, strut angle. And I hope the stro isn't really embarrassing looking, because I just, the last race we were just at, oh, there's the results here, right? It was a, a double header and I won on Saturday and I was a goat on Sunday. Well, I finished not goat by greatest of all time, but uh, ran poorly. I finished fifth anyway on Sunday, so not too bad. Okay, always take your pool noodles out. This is why you should never jam them up in here. These things pick up a ton of water. Take one of these out and squeeze it. It's just like a sponge. It's, uh, yes, there are closed cells in here, but it's very, very porous in between. I don't know if you can see it. You can see a lot of open cells, lots and lots of open cells. They pick up tons of water. It's death for a wooden boat. Use pour foam in your wooden boat. I don't care about the haters. Use pour foam in your wooden boat. I do it, it works awesome. Take your pool noodles out. Oh, why do I have one? This behaves as a spring. Fuel tank goes in, this pops in. 
and holds the fuel tank in place, okay? And take it out at the end of the day. And let's just get it out of the way. I think we can leave all of that on. I hope it doesn't look too ugly underneath. You have to know that this is a wooden boat that I think is what, seven years old, maybe older? And has been run very, very hard, trust me. So it is kind of rough. You can see that uh, I have taped over some cracks here, just to keep the paint from blowing apart. <laughs> oh, what a good boat. Okay, what's the ride height? Where do I set my strut? How do we check it? This boat has a flat bottom design. Don't do it, I don't recommend it. It's a flat bottom design. It's overly reactive because there's too much hitting the water all of the time. There is a better way. Watch my Eliminator build video and the new, the Eliminator 2. I did a first one a long time ago. Doug Shepard has it now. Uh, it, it was fine in one races, but it, it's, a, it's a raging beast to hold on to. The newer one, it's a fairly recent video build series. The center section is unique and fantastic. It has won all of its races but one, and that's because uh, the driver jumped the gun and he went around and passed everybody except the leader was gaining on him but finished second. Needed one more lap. Anyway, it's ballistic, it's awesome. Don't do this, do that. Okay, but this is what it is and so I deal with it. How do we know our ride height? Again, this style boat has a flat bottom so it'd be really, really easy. We're gonna pretend that it has a traditional brake where somewhere in here, this section is flat, and then here, the, the forward section of the floor raises up to the bullnose, right? Very, very common. Your boat is built that way, guaranteed. I don't guarantee it. Highly likely. Okay, so we wanna check it. Here's what we're gonna do. We need straight edges. And I remember where I put them. Remember, we're imagining that this floor has raised away, right? And what we need to do is check the relationship between where the ride pads are all the way at the back in relation to the floor back here. So we need a trustworthy straight edge. This is fairly trustworthy, might be more flexible than I would want. You can use a piece of angle aluminum, that way there's no flex, but this is demonstration purposes. I'm gonna flip it over so those numbers don't confuse us. I'm gonna lay it on here and we're gonna weight it here so that it is hold, held flat. Yeah, I mean, it's laying there pretty flat. I'm gonna weight it anyway, just so that I know that it's staying on this portion, the flat portion of the floor. So let's do that really quick, if I recall. Yes, temporary location for this. It goes over there once the lathes consolidate. There should be, indeed there is. One, two, three blocks. We'll just put a couple on here so that's very reliable, right? Now it goes forward. Now we know that the flat section of our floor coincides to up here. Like if we were measuring, oh, well let's do it all the way out here. The bottom of this is the same as this, okay? And let me get my little measuring stick. Where is that? Here. Second drawer. No. First drawer. <laughs> I'll forget the next time too. Sorry about the spinning around. All right, now we're gonna measure it up here, pretending that we're, well, let's do it here. All right, fine, back up. Let me see the thickness of this material. 430 seconds, which is what? Eighth of an inch, right. So what, whatever measurement we get, we're gonna add an eighth of an inch. Now we're gonna take our trustworthy straight edge and we're gonna go on the ride pads, on the tapping surface of the ride pads, right? When this thing is up at speed, we want these to be tapping. We want this to be level with the water. We want our prop to be the same height as the sponsons. So the center hub of the prop and the sponsons are the only thing tapping the water, right? Does that make sense? Okay, yes, no, I don't know. All right, we're here. I'm gonna stand this guy behind it, and I'm gonna to try to hold everything together while you and I go down here and look. It is at, I see 16, 17, 18, 19, 20. It is at, well, I moved it now. 20, 30 seconds from the ride pads to my ruler, 
add 4 30 seconds, eighth of an inch, which makes what? 24 30 seconds, which is what? Three quarters of an inch. Right, this boat has a three quarter inch ride height, which is too dang shallow, right? Okay, a lot of experimentation went into this boat. Uh, seven eighths would be better. But here we are, three quarter. So where do we want to set our strut? Gosh, I hope it's right. Can you see it? Three quarter. I mean, it might be a half of 30 second deeper. This is your starting point, folks. Set your strut, center line of the hub, same depth as the sponsons. That's your starting point, and you can always tweak it a little bit, but if you find yourself down here and having and yanking away on this thing, no, nope, the balance of your boat, aerodynamically, something else is wrong. Ideally, again, makes sense, right? You want the flat part of the boat to be riding parallel to the water. If it's canted up, what's it gonna do? It's gonna lift, right? If it's canted the other direction, what's it gonna do? I don't know. That means your brake is actually gonna hit before the boat taps back here and it's gonna ride wild. Craziness, man. So, starting out the same depth as back here. Hope that makes some sense. Let's go all the way up and check the depth of the uh, recovery surfaces. And that'll be a little more realistic with what it would be like if we were actually checking the ride surfaces on a hole that went, where it traveled away. See, this one is just flat. We'll go all the way up here. What is the depth? Okay, we're gonna set this across here. Right at the tapping point. That's pushing it. Again, that's why we would use a more trustworthy straight edge. I'm just going to lift it up and bring it over to us. Uh, looks like it's between 17 and 18 30 seconds, right? So 22 30 seconds. These are a little bit higher up. Let's look at it this way. Okay, there would be our level writing surface, right? A little bit of extra clearance here. Okay, does that make sense? So you can play with different depths and different angles and all that again. These angles are a little bit too extreme, as are the riding angles, trust me. That's how you set it. Are we good? Mr. Ford, wish I could remember his first name. Was it Adam? I feel like saying Adam now. I don't remember. Hope that helps. Set your strut. It's where it should be, shouldn't have to move it. Oh, we didn't talk about the angle. Where are you gonna set that? Gosh, this video is a mess. I haven't shot one in a while, huh? Maybe I'll edit it. I'll zip through all the stupid stuff, which is about 95% of the video. Okay, get yourself one of these if you don't have one. Why? Yes, you can get one of those round gauges that, you know, that swings, but that measures level to the world. This measures, measures to the level anywhere, you know, here you can already see to the world we're at a little bit of an angle, but that's okay. We're going to turn it on. In fact, I'm going to lay this on here. Uh, let, let me tell you why. Wood is a little bit untrustworthy. Fiberglass absolutely can't be trusted. It goes everywhere. You, you put it in a different place and it's going to wobble around. So you do need something fairly trustworthy that you can lay onto your boat. Even weight it if you have to so that it's sitting nice and flat. That's going to give us a really good surface. We're going to set it on. We're going to push. Oops. Yeah, we're going to turn it off. Let's turn it back on now. And we'll hit zero so it zeroes out. And now we're going to set it on our strut and find our reading. Should be close to one. It is 0.9. Uh, see the arrow? 0.9 this way. If you're unsure, just grab it and angle it a little bit and you'll see, okay, yes, it increases. If it was the other direction, you'd see the arrow point the other direction. Okay, so you're gonna look uh, somewhere around one degree. Eh, you can call it positive or negative depending upon which way you're looking at it. I don't care. One degree this away. <laughs> All right, so that we're angled up a little bit towards, towards the motor. Yeah, that's your starting point. Change it from there. Don't be afraid to make changes. If you gotta make big changes on your depth, something's wrong with your boat. Go fix your boat. Go build your boat. I'm gonna build that gasser fairly soon. Hang in there.